those of you who haven't heard of the Financial Modeling Institute, um, you know, we are an organization that promotes awareness, excellence, and discipline in financial modeling um, through world-class um, certification programs. Um, so the ones that um, we have um, put out there are, you know, we begin with the foundations accreditation, and this is basically your starting point for um, in financial modeling. If you don't have any background in finance, um, this is the perfect starting point. Um, and it does give you the opportunity to acquire the basic financial modeling knowledge and skills. Uh, we then have our most popular program called the Advanced Financial Modeler, or you may have heard of it as AFM. Um, so this is the one that tests um, how well you can build a three-statement financial model within a limited time frame of four hours. Uh, once you pass the AFM exam, you can go to our next level, which is called the um, Charter Financial Model or CFM. And this is when you actually, you know, test your model uh, problem solving skills. So a little bit harder to get. And then finally, we have level three, the Master Financial Modeler. And I am very excited to say that Danielle today is one of our first. Oh, look, what, look what arrived yesterday. I was very excited. Show us, Let's show us, um, Danielle. This actually arrived in the mail. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. Congratulations once again. But yes, Danielle was one of the six MFMs uh, that we introduced earlier this summer. Um, and this is basically for um, contributions to the financial modeling um, community. Um, it's not something that you get through an exam. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, thank you again, Danielle, for everything that you are doing for the financial modeling community. Um, and then uh, finally, just before we move on to the next presentation. Um, so when you become part of the FMI and you sign up for one of our exams, you also get access to our community. And what this means is that you have an area with all of your exam preparation resources um, where you can just learn on demand. You have a collaborative environment where you can ask different questions and just learn from other financial modelers who can help you with any challenges that you may be facing at the moment. Uh, it's a great opportunity to meet other um, accredited financial modelers. So just to build your network, and I'm sure that I will speak about the importance of that shortly. Um, and you also get to attend all of our webinars and events. Plus, uh, you have access to the recording. Um, so having said that, this session will be recorded um, and it will be available to FMI community members within the next 24 hours. Um, and that's where my presentation ends. For those of you who uh, are interested in joining FMI, I'm going to quickly share the link uh, in the chat. Uh, and yes, the last thing to say before we begin, um, you should have access to the chat and the Q&A feature. Um, so feel free to leave any questions that you may have for Danielle in there. Um, and we will, we are allocating quite a bit of time towards the end of the session to go through um, your questions. Um, a lot of you have expressed an interest in this topic, and I know you're very excited to begin. So um, before... Um, Without further ado, Danielle, uh, welcome um, to this event today. Uh, We're very excited to have you with us. Uh, Danielle is an MFM, a Microsoft MVP, uh, the organizer of the Women in Financial Modeling uh, Meetup Group, probably the biggest one for women out there. Um, so yeah, uh, Danielle, I'm going to let you say a few words about yourself as well, and we can we can begin. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't think I, I don't think I need to, um, but um... But yeah, so basically, um, you should be able to see my screen, I think. Um, I'm a, yep. a financial modeler. I, um, and yeah, financial modeling is, is kind of my world. And I think that, um, and this is a topic that I think is really important for financial modelers because, you know, financial modeling is such a fantastic skill to have. And we as modelers um, spend so much time improving our skills because it's really technical and it's quite hard to stay up to date, you know, with all of the excel things that are changing all of the time and you know making sure that your skills are really top notch and i think that sometimes we don't spend mm -hmm. as much time telling other people about what we do um or the work that we've done or promoting ourselves because we think that the work will just speak for itself and um yeah that's which it might do but but maybe not 
So I think that people don't always understand exactly uh, what a financial modeler does. And so your work perhaps doesn't have the impact that it should if you don't take the time to promote your skills and by default then um, build your profile as part of that. So what I'd like to do today is to just discuss some simple ways, just some ways that I have found uh, that work. Um, ways that I uh, have promoted myself and, and built a profile. Uh, I am really, It's really just my view of what's worked for me. So I'm really interested to see what other people have to say. If you have things that, um, that have worked for you, feel free to pop those in the chat. If you have questions, um, I may not see the chat as I'm talking, but um, if you have questions, pop those in the Q&A or just chat. You know, it's nice to, to, to hear other people's um, opinions and things. So um, these are the kind of things that we'll go through uh, that will be I've sort of split it into internally, so within the organisation and publicly, but also both online and offline as they might need a slightly different approach, um, you know, whether you are um, in an online environment or, um, or offline. So, um, yeah, let's, um, let's talk about why you would need to promote your skills and profile. Why is it important? Um, I'm first going to talk about the community and the financial modelling um, industry itself. I really think that we, we need uh, leaders. You know, I think there's a desperate lack of leadership in the industry, especially uh, of modellers that are coming from different backgrounds. So, and, and this might be a little bit um, controversial, but I think that modelers, uh, by definition, we are a fairly reserved type of person, not always, but typically you do need to have quite a high level of focus and not everybody is suited to becoming a financial modeler. If you're the sort of person that just wants to be with people all the time, then maybe modeling is not so much for you. It's, um, it's sometimes a solo pursuit. It shouldn't be. It really should be collaborative and you, the modeler should be working as part of the team. But often it's seen to be as a solo, you know, it's just you and your keyboard, that kind of thing. And, and typically modelers will... Uh, will often be um, people that are happy with your own company and we don't you know always make a big song and dance about what we've done and we just get on with the job you know and um, we don't always not always the sort of person that might put ourselves forward because we just think oh well if we do a good job then that will kind of speak for itself which may not always happen and so I think it's really important that we have leaders and the more leaders that we have in financial modeling particularly one from um, different backgrounds the more our industry will grow and that will promote the profession so if any of those um, you know the past financial modeling uh, championships or um, you know uh, those sort of competitions if anything is um, if anything of those is to go by we would think that modelers all look the same but we know that the industry will benefit from having modelers of different backgrounds and it's so important for aspiring modelers to see that particularly those that are looking at doing the FMI exams because it's just such a niche skill. And the more people who understand financial modelling, the more the industry is going to grow. And in my opinion, FMI is doing a great job of promoting financial modelling as a discipline in its own right, um, that it is, um, it is a career like in and of itself, not just part of something else. And I think that's, that's great. Because I, th I think that because modellers are good at Excel, um, I think that sometimes um, it's seen to be a rather junior role, um, and yet it's such a it's such a complex topic, and it's so difficult to do. And yet, good modelers are in short supply. And I know there was a, a big survey of financial modelers that went out a couple of years ago for and run by um, Philstack Modeler. And I know that off the back of that, like one of the key takeaways was the lack of appreciation for the discipline of financial modeling as an industry. And modelers didn't feel that they, um, that clients or customers would understand what is required to become a modeler and that their skills are not appreciated. And um, I remember when um, Kenny Whitelaw Jones published an article on, you know, are you seen as being just the modeler? And I think it was uh, was one of my favourites. And, um, you know, we're perhaps not seen as being, um, you know, a uh, uh, you know, you're just the modeler, a fairly junior person, and yet it's one of the most in-demand skills. And so that's why I think promoting the profession uh, is, is important. And it's something that we will all benefit from. 
Um, also, you know, thinking about the work that you're doing and the financial model that you have created, it's important for people to trust the model. So people need to be able to trust the numbers. They need to trust our work and therefore they need to trust you. And our models just won't have integrity if people don't believe that our models, that our models are accurate. So it doesn't, we, our work's not going to have the impact that it should do if it doesn't have the trust. So if people know who you are and what you're about, then that's going to build trust. And that means that your work will have better impact. And lastly, you know, altruism aside, um, you personally will get a lot out of building your, uh, building your reputation. So, you know, not least of all, getting better, you know, opportunities and, of course, more money. Um, you know, we should, it's important to learn to be comfortable talking about money, talking about your achievements. And I know it's hard to do, but we've got to do it. It's the cost of living is going up and we just got to keep, you know, keep those rates going, <laughs> keep those rates higher. And as a consultant um, or and, and if a client kind of quibbles about your rate, it's so hard not to take that personally. I think it's quite, quite difficult um, because it is personal really. But, you know, the bigger your profile is, the easier it's going to be to really command um, decent rates that you um, that you know without being over the top, but you know decent rates that um, that you should really be getting. So um, let's jump in. I'm going to start with building your profile internally. Uh, I'm talking about within the organisation. So assuming that you um, you know you're a financial modeler or financial modeling is part of your role and you're working within the organisation. So I'd like to talk about some ways that you can help to promote um, your skills and also the profile because. This is where most people will start. So they'll start within an organization and as their skills and their networks grow, maybe they'll then start to build a brand and maybe then they'll work in a more public role. So if you're just working in an organization and you know, you're doing good work, um, but you feel like nobody knows uh, what you're doing, make sure that you speak up. So just if you have something to say, for goodness sake, say it. Um, you know, if you're in a meeting and you haven't said anything, then you need to say something. I mean, it's there's you've got to contribute you know you've got to contribute to part you know you think you might think that you're just the modeler or just the numbers person but you have something important you know your your model the modeling skills that you have will provide perspective to the project I mean don't be a waffle bag like don't like hog the hog the um the uh you know the microphone but make sure that you at least contribute because your perspective is important and it does count so um, showcasing your skills, um, you know, find ways to make sure that people know what you do. So putting your hand up for projects is a great way to do it. Um, you know, if you can see that the, that modeling is needed in certain areas, say, hey, hey, you know, I'll, I'll do the numbers for that, you know, I'll, and that way people can really see how relevant your skills are. Um, share your enthusiasm for financial modeling with others. You know, people love that kind of nerd factor, you know, that just, oh, this is so geeky, you know, and being genuinely excited about it. I'm assuming here that you are genuinely excited about it, yeah? Because, you know, we, if you're not genuinely excited about it, find something that you are genuinely excited about because it's important. I mean, life is short, you know, you, should, you don't want to spend time, um, you know, on a, in a job that you're not really enjoying. So, you know, find something that does excite you. And I assume that, you know, Excel formulas, financial modelling is what's exciting for you. And, um, you know, share that enthusiasm with other people, you know. Um, and if other people don't perhaps share your enthusiasm, you know, you can find, you can try to help them. You can um, find a pain point. So if they're trying to run a report that's taking ages or, you know, they need to know some numbers quickly, that sort of thing, you know, show them just how much you can add value based on your skills. And they will then appreciate what you do, um, I think. So, yeah, um, once everybody knows, once everybody's kind of like you've showcased your skills and everybody knows what you do, you'll sort of become possibly the go-to person in your area. So every time somebody wants a, a model built, they'll come to you. Is that what you want? Maybe, maybe not, not necessarily. I mean, you're not going to get anything done if you're always having to fix somebody else's Excel formulas. So just be, so be approachable, but not always available. You know, you want to make sure that 
Um, what I would say with that is to when you build a solution, make sure that you include instructions. So show exactly how the model should be used. So that way people are less likely to break it because that's often what happens. You know, people come back to you and say, oh, this model's not working properly. And, you know, that's usually because they've used it in a way that you didn't intend. So testing and using, you know, instructions and things like that um, are really important. So, um, you know, you want to, but you do want to make sure that you're available and approachable. Um, so, you, you know, making sure that you actually go into the office where it's possible. It's not always practical, but actually being in the office in person, um, not using jargon and, um, you know, don't, don't sort of hide behind your keyboard, um, engage with people, you know, that sort of thing. That's uh, is what will help people to identify with you and you will become a more people more people will know who you are and you become a more high high profile person in the organization internally because building relationships internally and then staying in touch with people I think is is one of the best ways of creating opportunities later on during your career and I'd say if you're at the beginning of your career just um you know genuinely be interested in other people and connect with them. LinkedIn is a great way of staying in touch with people, not in a kind of networky way, but, you know, if you genuinely know that person, um, you know, stay in touch with them. And that's been, you know, very often a lot of my work comes from that. So I might, because I've been doing this for just such a long time, you know, I might have run a training course for somebody like years ago and then they'll move on to another organization. And because I've stayed in touch, mostly via um, social media, but, you know, in other areas, they will go to another organization and get me back in to do training somewhere else. And, and that sort of thing can work for you. So, um, you know, working on your relationships and um, and the network. And lastly, um, just looking the part, you know, um, I know this is something that's perhaps not as in, or not seen to be as important as it used to be, especially from the, um, you know, the working from home age where we are all often uh, online, but do make sure that you look professional and present yourself. And I'm not saying you have to look smart all the time. Like, you know, you don't have to wear like a suit all the time when you're on Zoom. Um, that's just me. But um, just make sure that you present yourself intentionally in a way that you want to be shown. Um, be, you need to be comfortable in how you present yourself. And I don't mean comfortable as in wearing sweatpants. Um, I'm, I personally, I feel most comfortable if I'm wearing a suit just because, because I came from investment banking and that to me is what makes me feel most like myself. So when I'm in a, in a professional environment, if I'm wearing a suit, I feel comfortable, but not everybody feels like that. So you've got to sort of figure out what it is like, what, what is your look, you know, the way that, um, and that will just make you feel, um, more approachable and professional. So I might jump in, um, Taya, and see if there's any um, any questions or anything that I should address before I move on to the next section. There were a few questions related to FMI that I have answered in the Q&A. Uh, but okay. yeah, um, just once again, if anybody wants to ask Danielle anything, feel free to leave your questions in the Q&A or the chat and we will mm -hmm. monitor that. Yeah. Cool. All right. So that's um, those are my tips for building your profile internally and if anybody has any other kind of experiences and things I'd love to hear about them in the chat but what I'm going to move on to now is building your profile publicly uh, which is quite a different thing but it's it's the same but it's about talking to everybody um, you know external to the organization and you do need to be a lot more careful about what you say external to the company so you do need to think about how you show up um, both in person and also online and when it comes to building your profile publicly most of this is online nowadays so I'm going to kind of talk mostly about online um, you know there's a lot of coaches and you know social media experts and, uh, you, you know, people that branding experts that will try to sort of tell you that you need to follow a specific formula. And um, I, I really don't think so. I think you, you need to just be yourself and do what you're comfortable with. Don't try and be someone else. Um, you are the way that you do things is not for everybody. Um, people will get attracted to you by the way that you do 
things and, um, you know, just be, do what comes easily and what comes naturally to you. And I would say what comes easily is important. Like if you um, hate writing, um, don't write, like don't have a blog. It's just, it's too hard, you know, whereas if you find videos really easy, just do those, you know, things like that, you know, do what's what's easy for you. Make sure that you're the same person, both privately and publicly, because if you're not, um, that's quite exhausting to try to maintain a persona that's not you. So um, I would say for building your profile, um, you know, show up to events. Um, and this is uh, both online and in person. Um, it's just it's just fun going to events like you'll meet people, you'll learn stuff. Um, you know, it's, you know, traditional networking, as well as all those fantastic Excel meetups. There's so many great um, online meetup groups to do with Excel and financial modelling. You've got the Toronto, the Vancouver, the London, Saudi Arabia, um, you know, all over. There's so many different online meetup groups and you can go along and um, and just learn such fantastic things. Uh, and, um, you know, if you're if it's a, an in-person event, um, you know, just make sure that you speak to someone, have a bit of a chat. Uh, and I'm not saying you should work the room because that's just, you know, <laughs> you don't want to want to do that. But just push yourself a little bit. Just go a little bit out of your comfort zone. And it certainly does get easier. And if you ask questions, um, that will help you to um, to get more comfortable with that. I know when I go to a, an online event, not so much with work things, but like if I go to um, something that's outside of work, and, you know, it's a big room and I've got a question and I put my hand up to ask and I would rather die than do that. But I do it because it's because it terrifies me, because I find it really uncomfortable. I think, well, that means that I should do it because it's going to push me that little bit more and do something that's just slightly out of my comfort zone. I think that's really important to constantly do things that are not um, exactly what you're comfortable all the time. It's um, easy to do what's easy for you and what's easy for you might be different for someone else as well. So when you are at an event, make your presence felt. There is no point in going to an event. Like even if you go to all the trouble of actually turning up, make sure people know that you're there. Like talk to people, say hello, ask questions. Um, if you're online in the chat, you know, jump in and, and make people know that no one's going to know that you're there. Like there's what, 112 people on this um, live right now. And if you don't get something in the chat, no one's going to know that you're there. So Get on there and make your presence felt. That's um, important. Um, it gets easier. It certainly gets easier over time. Do this, you know, um, that sort of thing. Um, know what your niche is, you know. Make sure that you know what you're about. Yes, it's probably financial modelling um, and finance, but you can never be too niche. You know, find what is it that you're interested in. So pick a lane, you know, pick a couple of things um, that you're interested in. And I'm talking mostly here about LinkedIn because that's where most people hang out on social media when it comes. That's probably the social media channel that is the most relevant for, um, for our community and for the financial modelling industry. And um, I think it's important to kind of have a coherent and consistent message so that um, the, the story that you're giving um, is something that fits within what people know about you. So make sure that uh, that you know um, that you know what your niche is and don't sort of randomly start posting about irrelevant things. Um, it's I know that you're probably interested in tons of different things, but you know just post about the certain things that uh, that people will be interested in relating to you. Um, think about um, when it comes to LinkedIn, I'd say um, you know don't be a slave. Um, you know, only keep a schedule that you can keep up. Um, you know, if you want to post every day and you've got the energy and the time, great, go for it. Um, that's that's fantastic. But you don't have to post every day. Um, you know, just you don't need to have a specific schedule, even if it's only once a month, but just at least post consistently um, things that fit your message and that you're genuinely interested in so that if somebody looks at, their pro at your profile, they understand, you know, what you're about, what it is that you're um, that you're interested in. So, yeah, own your profile. So, you know, be Googleable. When someone Googles you, what are they going to see? Um, even if you're not very active online, just make sure that they that they get what you're about. 
And I'd say, um, you know, don't listen to the social media experts. Don't, I mean, I mean, sorry, listen to them, but don't engage them or pay money for those coaches and programs and things like that. Um, I really don't think that, you know, there's a lot of information that you can get out there. Just being, um, just being yourself and just sort of um, not copying what other people do, but look, get inspiration from what other people do and go, hey, well, I could do that. I'm interested in that. I could do something like that. Um, I think that's um, more important. Um, you know, don't waste money on on advice. If you're a business, though, and you're trying to build a business, you can certainly outsource your social media for sure. Um, it's better than nothing outsourcing it. But in my opinion, I think you can tell when social media has been outsourced by a business. I think it is far better to have a real person that is engaging with the community. I think hands down that is going to create much better result um, as it has a much better sort of um, uh, authentic voice. So um, those are kind of my top tips for um, building your profile pr publicly. And then sort of lastly, I just want to get into a couple of general sort of general tips so things that I think you should do in general to boost your profile and to promote your financial modeling skills firstly get a qualification absolutely you know I think there's no better way to boost your credibility and your confidence than having a credential to say that you are a qualified financial modeler so nobody can dispute that you know what you're talking about if you have a qualification. And the idea is that it's independent. So it's not just you saying you're a financial modeler. It's an independent body saying that, and that, that you are a financial modeler and it's a rigorous certification. So that is, you know, if you're going up for a job and, you know, the, the, it's asking for financial modeling skills and you go for it and someone and you have the qualification, I really think you are going to be way ahead enter the competitions. So the Financial Modelling World Cup runs eight times a year. It is not easy, um, but I would recommend checking it out. And you can totally be anonymous. You do not have to put your name down there. Um, the new season, I, th I think we've only got one more round before the end of this year. Maybe it's two, I can't recall. Um, so make sure that you, you know, sign up between now and the end of the year so you get a bit practicing because the new season starts at the beginning of next year. So you want to make sure that you have a clean set slate and that's where the rankings will start to count from the beginning of next year. So um, just have a bit of practice before you get to the end of the year. I think that's, um, and, and you know, um, and then if you do well, you know, uh, you are definitely going to have, that is a, you're going to have an amazing uh, profile if you can say that you are one of the top models in the world, as well as not not to mention eSports, which is also run by FMWC, so um, XL eSports. So check those out as well if you find interesting. Um, and lastly, just push yourself. So just go do as much as you possibly can, as much as you have time for, as much as you feel comfortable doing, and then just go a little bit further yeah so just go a little bit more than what you're actually comfortable with you know if you're uncomfortable about posting something you know online and you think oh you know I've been posting too much just do it you know just go that little bit further you know it's, it doesn't pay to be humble I know it's it's that fine line of you know oh people are going to think I'm really full of myself and um, it is a fine line um, you know between coming across as confident and just being an annoying pain in the butt. Um, and I think the difference between being braggy or being just confident is, is that you know what you're talking about. So if you know what you're talking about, um, you know, people will be able to see that. And if you're full of it, like if you're talking rubbish, you know, you'll get found out pretty quickly. So I think, you know, some of those tips will um, will really um, will really help you. Um, yeah, so I lastly just wanted to say thank you to uh, some of the um, to the women in financial modeling group and special thanks to Alana Reed and Emily Williams. The other day I kind of um, told them, I asked them for their ideas and they gave me some really good feedback about what to chat to you about today. So um, if you are a, if you identify as female and you are a financial modeler, we'd love to have you along. We get together and do debrief sessions sometimes after the uh, Financial Modeling World Cup. Um, yeah, so um, we get together online every now and then. And if you'd love to be a speaker, we'd love to have you as well. So that's pretty much it from me. I've, I can see there's a whole lot of stuff in the chat which I haven't looked at. So I'll um, get on to Q&A now. So do you want to put the questions to me then, um, Taya?
Um, can't hear you. And um, what was that, Taya? Oh, apologies. I was on mute. Um, yeah, so there is a couple of questions in the chat and then a few more in the Q&A. Uh, mm -hmm. So we can start going through them. Um, so the first one is from Gaza. Uh, Gaza is from Rwanda. Um, and the question is, as a financial modeler, I believe everything we do is for our customer or beneficiaries, but sometimes due to the complexity of the model and a lot of formulas, clients don't understand, um, and even some of the workmates don't. My question is, as a modeler, how do I make sure my model is detail-oriented, insightful, and easy to understand to serve its purpose? Oh, that's a hard <laughs> one. Yeah, we would um, we would all love to have that. It's it's so hard the um it, to go between... Um, complexity and making it um it complex and yet understandable um, and if people don't understand the model they may not trust the model and that can be quite hard so i think um it's important to go through um some of the and I, i've often had this when i work for clients is that um you know they may have varying degrees of modeling experience or excel skills and so, um, you know, I make sure that they own the model. And yes, they may not understand the um, the formulas. And I often um, go into great detail about which formula was used and it's, they, they really don't care. They just want to make sure that the, the model works. But I think, um, you know, making sure that it is, um, that the assumptions are really clearly laid out and taking them through it and understand so that they understand what goes in there. Um, I think, um, so you say how um, making sure that the model is detailed, insightful, yeah. Um, I think the, um, one of the um, specifications, certainly in the AFM exam is about the, the layout. And that's really important, making sure that it is, um, looks good visually because people will trust your numbers more if you use formatting and make sure the layout is um, is looking good. I think that, I mean, obviously it needs to be accurate, but making sure that it, that it looks good and that people understand it and the assumptions are laid out clearly, I think are all good things um, that can help. Thank you, Danielle. And then we have a question from Adamo. Um, how can we persuade industry and public leaders in the developing economies to recognize the importance of financial modeling um, as part of project development, as sometimes when one speaks up, the environment hardly appreciates one's opinion on the best way forward to achieve good outcome? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, you can't, um, yeah, if someone's not not going to pre yeah you just do, you do need to just put your um, message forward and just be consistent in your message um, and say you know this is why I think financial modeling is important and this is what I've done and to just you know that's you, you if, if people are not appreciating it you can't just keep banging on about it um, I think you've just got to um, you know state your case and and then move on if it's um you know that's a, that's a hard one <laughs> that's, a, that's a hard question to answer yeah Agreed. Um, just opening the Q&A now as well. I can see one that I can quickly answer from um, Karo Katose, uh, who is saying that I'm preparing for October 21st AFM exam. Can I have a video on revolver calculation? Um, so Karo Katose, just to let you know, there are uh, plenty of videos in the community that do talk about the revolver. Um, so what I, what I recommend is going through the exam um, Q&A sessions. Um, and I'm happy to send you the direct link after this session, um, just so that you can go go through them. Uh, but Ian has gone into a lot of detail um, about the revolver calculation. Mm -hmm. uh, so that one's done. We have a question from Friday saying, hi, Danielle, please, how do one get projects to challenge financial modeling skills acquired, especially for those of us who went through an academy leading to sitting for AFM exam? I assume, Friday, that um, you're saying that perhaps you don't get the opportunity within your organisation to um, uh, to actually apply your financial modelling skills. And, um, yeah, there are some really good challenges that you can find online, for sure. Um, certainly the Financial Modelling World Cup has got some really uh, amazing uh, response, you know, um, uh, solution models that you can that you can work on uh, so I, I I think uh, you know there's uh, there's a lot of the old model off examples are there 
as well. Um, you know, just work through just like you did when you if you did AFM, you would have had a um, a starting uh, starting case and then a solution case, and you would work through it and compare your result to the solution. So you can there are lots of um, examples that you can get like that online. And I think there's a similar question from someone anonymous, um, and I think um, how to enter the UK market. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, no, uh, the role doesn't require financial modelling skills, how to tradition, transition into a role. Yeah, it's hard because they won't, they don't want to give you um, a job if you haven't done the job before. And if you haven't done the job, it's really hard to get on the job experience because you haven't had the job. So, um, and, and this, again, I think just, you know, practising as much as you can. And, and I think, you know, certainly having a qualification because it is very much a real life situation um, and having some kind of like, you know, showing your ranking in terms of the world uh, is perhaps um, a good place to start. Uh, there's an interesting question from Christian. Um, thank you for this session. I'm part of an organization as an investment officer, and I cover numerous countries where I'm involved in a quite number of projects. And I'm willing to build my profile internally as a financial modeler and want to organize a session with the project managers of my organization. The purpose will be to teach them the basics so that things can go quickly when we have new projects in the future. What do you think? And how do you think I should approach this session? Oh my gosh, that's exactly how I started. That's exactly what I did. I was working for a bank and um, I just I just sort of felt like there was um, missing skills and I just started a kind of informal um, session for people to get together. Um, you know, I, see, I hear people often do it at lunchtime, like they have like a, you know, every Friday and, you know, just share something. And I think that really does cement you as the go-to person within the organisation um, yeah, I think it's a great idea. So, um, yeah, teach them. I mean, how can anyone, like, not not want you to do that? I think it's a fantastic idea. What made you decide to be a financial modeler? I don't know. I didn't really. Um, I just loved Excel and I just um, worked with Excel. I was just, and, um, yeah, and didn't really realise it was called financial modeling until I, <laughs> until I started um, getting into it. So, um, and, yeah, I've never looked back. It's just such a, something, it's the sort of thing that I think most people find difficult, but um, I find, I think it's very rewarding. I love it. Mm. Uh, and then Ariana is asking, good evening, Tania, what is the biggest challenge you have faced in the corporate environment as a woman? How did you overcome it? Have you faced any challenges? Not generally? really. Not really. I never really think much about it. I just kind of um, get on with it. Um, yeah, I mean, I had kids and that was hard, you know, having, um, you know, little kids. And I worked in an environment where it was really long hours and I just wasn't prepared to go back to um, to working long hours after I had my first um, child. And, um, and that's why I started out on my own. So I think that's probably... Um, that was quite difficult, but that wasn't really something that's specific to women. Um, I mean, men face the same problem all the time. Uh, and I'm not sure, yes, if we can answer that particular question about entering the UK market. Uh, mm. But yeah, what um, the question is, it seems like a lot of recruiters focus more on having an accounting qualification rather than a modeling certification. Have you noticed that mm. your side or... Yeah, yeah. I mean, accounting qualification, I think, is good to have, and that will certainly help you as a modeler. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, the modeling certification is lesser known, I think. Uh, but when people hear about it, I think they realise that you do need to have some accounting skills in order to be a financial modeler. So um, it kind of covers both. Mm. Mm -hmm. Just going to go to the chat as well, just to mix things up a little, because we have a few questions in there as well. Uh, let me just see where we are. How should one price his services? I'm oh. sure this is a very <laughs> interesting yet challenging uh, question to answer. <laughs> yeah, that's so hard. And if you are an independent consultant, you don't know what other people are charging. And um, and that's just really, really hard. Um, I think, yeah, just 
um, you know, try and get some idea, um, you know, think about what you're happy, what, what you're happy working for and double it. <laughs> um maybe maybe not and then if um and then if you get pushed back then you'll know you've gone too far um that's all I could really can really say it's um you know finding out from what other people um are earning don't forget that when you are working as an independent consultant you may have to do um you you may need to invest a lot of time on the briefing and you know asking quests answering questions afterwards that you may not get paid for so you did need to consider that as well um, so it's very hard to um, to price for sure. Uh, we have a question from Karishma. Hi, Karishma um, from Mauritius. Uh, Danielle, thank you for your contribution in financial modeling. Could you please elaborate on the different jobs or careers we can follow as someone who's interested in financial modeling? Yeah, it's such a, that's why one of the reasons, one of the many reasons that I love financial modeling as a skill, because it can take you into so many different areas. You know, it's a core skill, but you might be in banking or you might be in corporate or you might be in so many different areas. But the core skill of financial modeling is relevant across so many different um, areas. So it really just depends on, you know, the opportunities that you've had or the background that you've got, but the your skill of financial modeling modeling will be applicable um, to all those different areas or diff different industries. Mm. Uh, and this is actually a question that we have seen in the community as well from um, Georgi. Um, any other tools you use for financial modeling other than Excel? Uh, and a similar question in the Q&A, how to use new tools be it Excel add-ons or web-based SaaS solutions like interactive dashboards linked to Excel to market mm -hmm. your skills. Yeah. Yeah, there are some um, great um, other add-ons and things. Um, uh, I don't. Um, I think there is just so much in the Microsoft ecosystem that I just have no need to go outside that. Um, but that's just me uh, because I like to teach people to become self-sufficient and I don't want to teach people how to do something and then find that they get into an organisation and they're like, oh, you have to buy um, you know, this piece of software. I would prefer to teach people how to just use standard Excel you know, as it comes um, or what's freely available um, from Microsoft. That's my opinion. But there are, I mean, there are lots of other pieces of software. And you could, you know, as a point of difference, you know, if you find something that's in demand that not many people know about, then that's great. Um, for me, I think it's just you can't go past Excel. Yeah. And just on that, have you noticed um, companies that are looking for financial modelers require any other skills um, or is it Excel mainly? Yeah. I mean, aside from like, you know, R and Python or yeah. VBA, those sorts of things, which are now within the Excel, um, but I don't, um, I, I don't really need to use those because I have what Excel does is, um, is sufficient for me personally. Great. Thank you, Danielle. Uh, we have a question about AI, which I think we were expecting. Mm -hmm. How will artificial intelligence affect the role and usefulness of human financial modelers? Mm. Um, I think it will make our lives easier. It makes everything easier doing um, stuff with AI. Um, but is the question relating to whether we should be worried about it, our jobs being taken over? Because um, I think we're a long way off that, um, but we do. It's it's a possibility that um, a lot of the things that we used to do, a lot of the ways um, that we used to model, are not necessary anymore. Like for example, we have dynamic arrays, which is not exactly AI, but you know these new technologies, which mean that the old way of doing things are not required anymore. And it's so important to just stay up to date. Uh, with what's out there and AI is definitely, you know, knowing, you know, getting familiar with Copilot when it's, you know, within your Excel, making sure that you understand how to use it because if you're, you shouldn't be worried, um, you know, they say you shouldn't be worried about a robot taking over your job, you should be worried about the other modeler who knows how to use AI and they're going to take over your job, not the, um, not the AI itself. So it's important to stay relevant and understand what's going on out there. Very well said. <laughs> uh okay not too sure if uh we can answer that question but um 
Hassan Salah from Sri Lanka is asking, um, they would like to know the roadmap for becoming FPNA data scientist. I'm not sure if you have any recommendations or please, if anybody um, can help Nissan Salah, feel free to leave your answer in the chat. Um, so I'll close that for now. Questions are coming in thick and fast. I'm not sure. If yes, there's know. a lot of questions. I hope we have enough time to go through them, but this is, I think it's great. Asking, do I provide one-to-one -one coaching for the exam? Um, sort of. I have a, a course that you can go through, and then as part of that, you get um, support sessions. So we do um, we do chat about the exam um, for sure. So that's um, available online on my website. Thank you, Danielle. Uh, we have a question from El Pito from Greece. Is it possible for someone with an accounting background like myself to leap into financial modeling? Absolutely. I mean, having that accounting background is the basis, you know, that's a solid basis uh, is, is knowing accounting um, because certainly for the AFM, you need to be able to build a full set of financial statements. So you need to understand, you know, what goes on a balance sheet, you know, where does, where do you put the depreciation, you know, all that sort of stuff. So it's very accounting based, absolutely. And, and then there's just the technical side. So if you don't have the Excel skills, that's something that you can certainly teach yourself and, um, and learn how to, how to build a model, because there's so many different aspects to modeling. There's the, the accounting background, the technical skills, which of course is really important, um, the design and the layout, um, the, the industry. So knowing your industry, um, it's really important, you know, logic, numeracy, you know, all of those things. Um, and I think by having probably the hardest thing to learn is the, um, if you don't have the accounting background, it's pretty hard to learn it. Um, and, you know, perhaps the, that sort of numeracy thing is quite hard to learn as well if you don't already have it. So, um, yeah, I think with an accounting background, I think you're quite well placed. Mm. Uh, yeah, and I think there was one more question on accounting uh, do we need to have an accounting certification to understand financial modeling? I have passed CFA level two exam, um, which, you know, I assume that it's not required, but it's always beneficial. Yeah, I mean, obviously, there's a lot more to a quali an accounting yeah. qualification than what is covered in the exam. I mean, it's um, it doesn't really teach you, um, you, know, you know, it's it's not the sort of thing you can go straight. You, you should sort of have the accounting background and then go into modelling. Um, you won't really learn accounting by becoming a modeller. I would say it's better to do it the other way around. Mm -hmm. Um, great. And then two questions that are sort of, we can maybe combine them from, um, Aksan and an anonymous attendee. Um, so is AFM enough to get business from clients, keeping in view the complexities of the real world financial models, or do we need CFM and MFM and a very, very similar one? I'm just going to read it out loud. Um, I have a qualification, but have had challenges to build a profile and get clients as a freelancer. How can I get to attract clients as a financial modeler? Um, mm -hmm. So I assume, again, having the AFM um, certification, to what extent do you think this mm -hmm. is enough to start getting clients? It, new not, it can't be the only thing you have. Like if you're starting from scratch, like straight out of the gate and you have no experience as a financial modeler and you... Um, you know, somehow manage to pass the exam. Um, if you, you you still need to have some background, and you need to have um, you need to be able. I mean, the AFM is just one type of financial model. It's set of financial statements, so um, it doesn't teach you all the other things that you need to do as a financial modeler. It's not going to teach you everything. Um, CFM certainly goes a lot further. Um, but I think, you know, there's a lot of, you know, getting some work experience as well. But I think having that qualification will kind of just show clients that you do know what you're talking about and you've made the time and the investment to get the qualification. I think um, it's not a cure-all, but it's, um, but, you know, coupled together with some work experience and a good sort of track record, I think it stands you in good stead to, um, to get good client work and jobs. Mm -hmm. And then I guess as a follow-up on that, uh, would you say that in your, ex or would you define a scope you will advise modelers to focus on so they don't focus on irrelevant niches? It's a question from ABBA. So kind of like, how do you know um, what else you should focus on when you're building your profile? 
Uh, you mean in terms of the types of financial models to build or? Just... Um, I think the question is probably a little bit more um, around outside of financial modeling. What mm-hmm. else you should focus on? And Abba, please uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Um, yeah. um, I mean, I, like I think all of those things, um, and I think you only you know what area you're strong or less strong in. Um, you know, I didn't mention, of course, um, speaking at events, you know, taking the opportunity to talk and, you know, providing leadership um, in whatever area that you're interested in. Um, I think, uh, you know, the areas that I think the quick wins go for the things that that you find easy. Like I said, with LinkedIn, you know, if you find, um, you know, shooting a quick video easy, go for that. Um, but if you personally, I would, I hate editing videos. So most of my videos just have my like thumb um, at the at the beginning and at the end, because I just, I'm not going to do that. I know that I'm not going to do it. So I just do what I find. I find it easy to just shoot a quick video, but if I have to edit something, I know it's going to take me a really long time. So I tend not to do that so much. So I do what's easy for you. Um, the thing that you most um, that most find um, easy to do. Do you think you can succeed as a financial modeler even without an accounting certification? Yeah, you don't have to. Certainly, don't have to be an accountant. Um, uh, but it's good to have. Um, you do need to have some background. It's you can't sort of just go in without any sort of financial um, background. I think you, you know, most modelers have got they're either an accountant or they have a, a finance degree or an accounting degree or something like that to back them up because it is it is very technical and you do need to know what you're talking about mm-hmm. uh, hi danielle is an aspiring financial modeler can you tell us about one of your success stories in building a financial model for a client and the impact it has in addressing some of the business problem while improving operational efficiency oh okay <laughs> i don't know <laughs> Um, yeah I think um, yeah it's I think it's uh, I think it's funny when um, when I because I've been often had the same clients for years and years and often they'll come back to me and like like years later and they'll say oh we run out of rows or something like that or, or, or this formula isn't working go, oh my goodness are you still using that and it's amazing to see um that that has is something that they use for a really long time um yeah I find that kind of rewarding although sometimes I kind of look at it and go oh gosh you know there's better ways of doing it you know you might have I might get things sent back to me and I've used the lookup formulas all the way through and I go wow no you should be using x lookup or something you know depending on what version they've got that sort of thing Mm. Uh, and we have a question about your mfm designation uh how how are you able to ace it did you go through afm cfm you must be super skilled in financial modeling yeah so um I, i went through well when i first um when fmi first launched i was like oh i don't you know, I'm, I'm a financial modeler, you know, I don't need a piece of paper to say I need to know my job. But then I realized how valuable it was and eventually, um, you know, actually sat down to do it. And um, and it was it was just a really good discipline to go through. Um, and then about a year later, I did CFM. So I wasn't always, I wasn't like in the first cohort, but fairly sort of early on because I could see that it was something good to have, um, you know, just to you know, have it as a qualification. And then uh, the MFM is a lot more about your leadership and profile and things like that. Um, And because I'm an MVP, a Microsoft MVP, a lot of the things that you need to do for that um, is kind of um, some of them, there's a little bit of crossover between them. So it did make it a little bit easier for me. Mm -hmm. We do have only five minutes left. So then maybe I will let you pick the last two or three questions. Um, the ones that are open in the Q&A. Yep. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Um, how do you prepare for the CFI, C, FMI certification without spending too much money? Um, yeah, I mean, you could totally um, make sure you um, sign up early enough to get the early bird <laughs> that's for sure and um and yeah like there's so much in there that you can prepare you don't need to do a training course I do have a training course but you don't need to to do that um so yeah it does it you know it does you do need to pay to sit the exam of course um 
Yeah, I'm just trying to see if there were other other questions. Um, there was another one about um, LinkedIn. So um, one of the questions was about LinkedIn advice. Would you give to financial modelers? So what is something that you would recommend financial modelers avoid? Um, yeah, so, you know, if you like posting, posting, posting all the time and posting garbage, that's just really annoying. I run the financial modeling in Excel LinkedIn group. And there's all sorts of stuff on there that I just have to, you know, delete from that. Um, one of the things I'd say is, um, you know, don't ever like get into arguments or be unprofessional on LinkedIn. So it's always you do need to be. It is a work environment. And if you wouldn't say it in the office, you shouldn't say it on LinkedIn. Um, you know, don't speak badly about other people. You can I know you can be really annoyed at someone, but don't don't do it publicly. Um, that's um, not very professional. Um, yeah. And maybe um, the valuable skills to showcase when building your profile as a financial modeler. Um, I think, you know, there's so many different skills that are involved with being a financial modeler, but I think probably the, the easiest way to wow people or the easiest way for people to go, oh, wow, that's really interesting, is the technical side of things. So, you know, showing them, um, oh, I'm just going to change that one little thing here and ooh, it's just going to change, you know, change the inputs and then, you know, all of the scenarios will change and, you know, maybe a nice chart or something like that. And, of course, you know, matching the colours to your logo, making it look really nice and, you know, you change one of the inputs and then, of course, everything in the chart changes, that sort of thing. That's pretty easy. Um, if, if they don't have good Excel skills, that's pretty easy to impress and wow people with that now. Um, and they'll really understand what you can do then. And should we do one last question from the Q&A? We wouldn't be able to go through everything. Uh, this is an interesting one from Adza. Um, do you schedule any breaks with building models or do you pull all-nighters to deliver and they have a vacation, say, in the summer? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, no, I just work a full day. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, you get really, it's important, I think, and I often, I was saying this today in my training course, to take breaks, because, you know, if you're pursuing a career as a model and you get hunched over, and it's really bad for your body, you know, I have horrible, um, you know, neck and shoulders and it's, it is important to take regular breaks and I have a piece of software that pops up and tells me to take a break um, because it's very focused and you can get really into it and just want to you know get it done um, but yeah I don't pull all matters I used to in investment banking you know it used to be like oh you know we'd sleep under the desk and you know all that sort of stuff um, but yeah I haven't done that for, <laughs> for many years um, yeah I just um, think you've got to be a bit more organized and um, yeah and just get the model done and um yeah I don't take vacations yeah <laughs> my <laughs> vacation, traveling and work and stuff yeah <laughs> amazing well thank you Danielle I think this has been really great we do have a couple more open questions I think what we can do is maybe send some of those to you a little bit later um, mm -hmm. And then uh, we can definitely, you know, post some of the answers inside the FMI community. Um, so, you know, people can continue the conversations in there. Uh, but yeah, I think this has been super insightful. Thank you very much for just sharing your perspective and experiences on the topic. Um, thanks to everybody for joining us today. Once again, this session will be available inside the community within 24 hours. Um, then if you want to share some of your slides, you're free to do that um, and we can add it under the oh, recording. Yep. Yeah, I actually think I'm going to write, I might release an article based on, you know, these things that I've talked about. So keep an eye on my LinkedIn profile and I'll publish that um, very soon. So um, that will kind of summarize all of the, um, the tips that I've given you today. Sounds, sounds great. Uh, thanks very much, everybody, for joining us. Thank you, Danielle, once again, and hopefully we will see you soon. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, guys. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.